Hello again, everyone. I have had a lot of requests for showing my pens that I do sketching with and the inks that I use that are waterproof. So all of these that I have over here to the side, which are a little larger or a little longer than the ones that I have in this case, uh, these are all the pens that I normally have uh, waterproof ink in and use for sketching. These are sort of dedicated to sketching. Uh, of course, you can use any pen for sketching. Uh, if you want to make it permanent, you just put permanent ink in your fountain pen. Um, it really just depends on what quality of line you want when you're sketching. I tend to favor thinner nibs for sketching, so that's what you'll see reflected here. Um, and there are a couple of troublesome nibs <laughs> in here, so you'll, you'll see that when I get to it. But um, this case here that I have all these in is by Superior Labor. It is a collaboration with Wonder Pens in Canada. I will see if I can find a link to that because I know you'll probably ask me. I'm going to go into these pens here in a minute, but first I am going to focus on these two longer pens. So this is um, probably the least expensive of the bunch here. And this is a platinum desk pen. This just happens to be a red model. I got this off of Amazon. If I can find this particular one, I will link to it. Um, but they seem to have changed their design a lot over the last few years. So I'm not sure if they have this one anymore. Um, but they come in black and red and, and maybe a couple of other colors, I don't know. But this has a steel nib but it is somewhat flexible, which is really nice. And um, because this is a platinum pen, I have used the platinum converter, but you could also use platinum cartridges. Um, and you can actually get platinum carbon black, which is permanent in a cartridge, which I'll show you later. All right, so I am gonna test these for you first before going on to the other um, bunch of pens. So I'm going to be testing this on Tomoe River paper. This is just a pad of the old Tomoe River paper here. And then this is watercolor paper, which is what I usually sketch on. Because what I'm usually doing, especially with permanent inks, is I am watercoloring over them. So that's why I tend to like permanent inks for my sketching. All right, so actually I'm gonna do this Lamy Joy, which I haven't shown you yet. This is a Lamy Joy in white. And um, what I actually didn't know for a long time is that you can actually post this pen so you can put the, the cap there. It does tend to be a little bit back heavy um, and the model is fairly long. And the other problem with posting it is that <laughs> uh, if you have any ink in the cap, it is going to get on the pen. And because this is a white pen, it's definitely going to get a little messy. So I'm just gonna leave it like that for now. Um, so this is the Lamy Joy, like I was saying, and this, I have the rather newer Lamy nib that has this uh, little bit of an architect shape to it. And I just refilled this and I was having a little bit of flow issue, oh, but that seems to have been resolved. Okay, good. So that's the downstroke on this. And then this is the side stroke. So you're getting a narrower downstroke and a wider side stroke. Um, oh, it looks like I got something on my paper here, but that's okay. So here, um, this is the platinum carbon black ink that I have in here. And um, as you can see, it actually flows pretty well. And like I said, what's nice about this nib is that you can get thinner lines when you go down and wider lines when you go side to side. And you'll just see that that went a little bit dry. This particular combination, I've had a lot of problems with going dry. Um, and actually even before I replaced the nib, I had trouble with this pen nib combination going dry. Um, I just think that this particular pen is just really not sealed very well. And also because I am using platinum carbon black in here, it can sometimes get clogged in nibs pretty easily actually, because it has larger particles than a lot of the other permanent inks out there. Um, so there are actually like the platinum desk pen, um, at, at least the black one, I'm not sure if the red one is also made for this, but it is made specifically for accommodating the larger particles in the platinum carbon black ink. But uh, ironically enough, I do not have platinum carbon black ink in this one, but I do in some others. So um, platinum carbon black is probably the one I use the most in my pens, but I'm, I'm sort of shifting over to more de atramentis document black ink because the flow is a little bit better. It doesn't have those larger particles. 
um, but I'm still trying to use the carbon ink because just because I have so much of it. <laughs> um, but this one has another De Atramentis ink called uh, Document uh, Document Fog Gray, which is more blue than gray. <laughs> And um, so I was showing this, you the steel nib here. It's, it's a fine or maybe extra fine, I can't remember. But this one, what's kind of nice about it, it has the same size stroke both ways. It's a little hard to see that. Um, and, I, and I also just refilled this because it was empty, so it might not be fully in the nib yet. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, and uh, it, the nib does have a little bit of flex to it, which is kind of nice because you can get some line variation even though it's a steel nib. And here it is on the watercolor paper. And you get a much thinner line than with this other nib here. Um, and I tend to often get you know, not a solid line, like there'll be some gaps when it's on rough, well, this isn't rough, this is cold press watercolor paper. And I kind of like that, I like kind of like the sketchy quality of it. Um, but this is gonna be your cheapest option, although I do have a converter in here, like I showed you, um, or did I show you, I can't remember here, I'll, sh I'll take that off again. I have a platinum converter, and the platinum converters are not cheap. They're like 10 to $12 on their own, and that's about the cost of this pen. So it does come with red cartridges in this case, and if you get the platinum desk pen, it comes with platinum carbon um, refills, I believe. So there are a couple of cheaper options. I have also used the um, Pilot Kakuno pens, which is another cheap option. I don't have any of them here today, but that is, um, that's a pretty good option for a really inexpensive sketch pen. But I found that all of the cheaper sketch pens do tend to dry out more easily. And then it's kind of a drag if you're traveling with your pens to sketch um, because you're really not going to, um, you're really not going to uh, be having a good time trying to get your pen to flow. So these are a couple of other, um, pens in the that were in the front here. Um, so these are these are two discontinued pens. So I'm not going to focus too much attention on these. I have two of them because I bought another one <laughs> when they were going um, when they were getting discontinued. So this one uh, is a platinum pen that has a particular number associated with it, which I always forget, but I will put the link down below. Um, and these I both have loaded up with um, platinum carbon black as well. Let's see, one of these was going dry. It's this one. And I haven't, I haven't um, washed these out in quite a while. So um, they might be, uh, they might be having a little bit of clogging. So this also has the platinum carbon black in it. This is a pen that was not designed for platinum carbon black, but it doesn't seem to have too many issues with flow. Um, and this does have a gold nib. So like I said, I'll put the model number, I probably won't put a link because it probably won't be available anywhere, but I will put the model number just in case you ever find one used. Um, this used to be the cheapest gold nibbed pen that you could get really from a major manufacturer. And um, it has a really nice flex as you can see. And then here's on the watercolor paper. Very nice. You can get some variant variation in line. You can press down. We don't want to press down too hard because you don't want the tines display. But you can see you can get some really nice line variation. This is actually one that I bring with me most times when I travel. Um, I haven't had any issues with it leaking or anything like that. And this one I do actually have a platinum carbon black cartridge. In here because it's a platinum so the cartridge will fit and I actually was going to show you how I replaced them with this other one which has gone empty so you just take out the old cartridge just by pulling it out like that and then I here I have a new one here um, you can see it says carbon ink and this comes in a little box and then you you have to press fairly hard to get the um, actually, let me well to get the nib to, let me take that off, to get the nib to seat 
There you go. So you really have to press it and then it will flow down into the pen. If it happens pretty quickly for me, especially because um, everything's under pressure here in Denver, Colorado. Um, and I think that other one, even though it wasn't empty, it was almost empty because you can see this one is much, much darker now that I've just filled it. And see how quickly that came up to speed? That is really, yeah, this one's probably going empty. Um, and these are both kind of the same. They really feel the same. Um, I love these and I'm really, really sad that they're discontinued, hence the two of them. <laughs> That's why I got two of them. But like you saw, they're really easy to swap out the uh, platinum carbon cartridges and then they start up right away. So these are really great if you can find them. I'm gonna put that in the front there. And then, so this is an Opus 88 Fantasia, which also is discontinued, but you can still find them around. I've seen them on Endless Pens, for example. Um, they still seem to have them from time to time. And then I have put a uh, Nagahara uh, Needlepoint Nib from Franklin Christoph on here. I'm pretty sure I must have ordered this with another pen because the the custom grind ones you you have to order with a pen um, but this I really like because I can get super thin super I can't even see that super thin lines you can get like hairline lines and I will put this closer up to the camera too here now and then at the end um, so this one, and, and this is like, this doesn't need to be a gold nib. This is a steel nib. It works great. If the flow is great, I think part of it is the pen design um, because this is an eyedropper fill pen. The flow is really nice to the nib. Um, and I have never really had troubles with this at all. Although I don't have platinum carbon black in here because I did not want to clog my needlepoint nib. So this, I believe, is Birmingham Waterfront Dusk, which is a permanent ink. Um, and on the watercolor paper, you'll, you'll see, you can get at, you can get finer lines, but because the ink tends to kind of seep into that watercolor paper, you, you have the potential to get broader lines, which is another reason why I like thinner or, or narrower nibs when doing sketching. Okay. Love it. And this, is, this would be great for travel because it is so compact. Um, to release the flow, you, you turn this up. There's like basically like a little stopper in here. So if you, I, I had left this in the open position. And then when you're done, so that it doesn't leak everywhere, you can just screw it back on. And then when you wanna do it again, you just unscrew it to relieve that little um, stopper that's up there. And it is a little, you know, you have to screw on this, this um, cap onto the back, but it has a really nice weight and it makes for a really nice sketch pen. And that Birmingham ink is permanent as well. They do carry permanent inks. Okay, so I'm gonna put that one away and then I have more inside here. So I'm just gonna empty these out and I do have one that wouldn't typically be called a fountain pen, but I think technically it is. <laughs> so I'll show you that. Um, I have a pen BBS, another Opus 88. This is another pen BBS. Um, this is a Twisby Go. This is a Twisby Eco. And then this is another carbon platinum, uh, a platinum desk pen that I've I've sort of modified by attaching it to a different body. So I'll show you that <laughs> shortly. Um, and that's all I have in here. So it holds all of those. And so I'll show you this one first. So this is actually a brush pen. This is a Pentel brush pen. I think that's what it's called, but it comes with permanent ink, which is why I wanted to show it to you. Um, because it's it's one of the few brush pens that does come with permanent ink and it has a cartridge. So you can get replacement Pentel permanent ink cartridges for this. And um, this is also quite nice because you can get, 
you know, variety of lines. You can get even hair thin lines by just touching it. And then you can also get really broad. You can get I'm terrible at calligraphy with a brush pen. <laughs> You can get a, <laughs> I was supposed to, I was writing hello, not hell. <laughs> so you can get a really broad variety of marks and strokes with this. It's really nice on watercolor paper because sometimes you get this rough texture with it that I really, really like. And then you can watercolor over it. So it's very expressive. I really like it. Okay. So that's not technically a fountain pen because it doesn't have a fountain pen nib, but I wanted to show that to you anyway. So now I'm going to show you this. Um, so this from here up is the standard platinum desk pen. So I'll show you. I actually have one at my desk. Um, so it looked like this before I took the back off. It has this longer back. And I do think they've revamped these because I got these quite some time ago. And um, now they do look a little different. But I found another pen that's screwed onto the back with the same threading. And this is shorter, which I prefer. The cap does post on the back, which is kind of cool too. Um, so, which you can't do on that. This is like one of the reasons why I wanted to have a different back to it because you can post the nib. Um, and then this has the same stainless steel nib that the red platinum desk pen had. Um, but this one is specific. I'm not sure the red one is, but this is specifically made for the platinum carbon black ink. And it's, it works great for sketching and it has a somewhat flexible nib. Like I was saying, um, you're going to always get a little bit of a broader line with the watercolor paper because it um, absorbs the ink more, but it works great. I love it for sketching. And uh, even if you don't have this set up, you can just, you know, have the regular back to it, um, but you won't be able to post the cap. Um, but this is just a little more portable. I'm not a big fan of the long pen design. So that's why I've done this. So I'll put this back in here. And that of course has platinum carbon black in it as well. Um, one last pen with platinum carbon black and then I'm gonna get to some other inks. Um, and the platinum carbon black, I showed you the cartridge, but it also comes in a bottle. So you can either put this in your um, platinum converter or any other brand's converter. Uh, but do plan on cleaning your pens out more frequently. I'm really bad at that. Um, but if you have this carbon ink in there, it can get kind of clogged up and then you'll have to do some more extensive cleaning. Um, so plan to clean it out more often when you put the platinum carbon ink in there. That said, I have had platinum carbon ink in this pen for literally years and it has been no problem at all. This is one of the reasons why I really like Twisby's. It's even the Ecos, because when they are closed, they are closed and they are sealed and they don't dry out. So that's really, really nice. But this is just a standard Twisby extra fine steel nib on this. And um, it works really great. I've never found it to clog up with this ink. So it flows really nice. Um, so this is another fairly inexpensive choice. And there is a little bit of flex. It's even more than the desk pen, I think. Although it really does vary with the nib, depending on the nibs you get. Sometimes they can be a little more stiff. But I think this is also a great option for a fairly, you know, mid-range to cheaper um, sketch pen. So these are these are really great. This this is a yellow one that is now discontinued, but they've recently released a clear yellow one if you're looking for yellow. Okay, so now let's get to this uh, Pen BBS. So this is a Pen BBS 500, which uh, basically its main feature is that it has pump action on the back, similar to the Twisby Go. Um, so it's really convenient to just be able to syringe up your ink and you can get a pretty good fill in here. And this is a, another um, another brand's permanent ink that I have in here. It is the Roar and Klinger, Klingner uh, Frida is the color, but they have a whole line of permanent inks in various colors. They actually have quite a uh, quite an extensive line. 
yes and this one does not post so there's that and I have put a blue do flexible nib on here it did fit perfectly with its own um, um, Oh my god, I'm blanking. So the whole unit, the nib unit itself fit in here. The only problem I have is sometimes, so this one, the nib has a little bit of an of ink flow issue. So what I've had to do is unscrew this back part. Oops, no, that's not the right piece. Sorry about that. There is actually, I don't know, how did I get that to go to, to, anyway, I'm not gonna do that now, um, but since I am having some ink flow issues, I'm gonna dip it into some water just real quickly because that has been working to get it going. Um, so this is the back of the Blue Dude nib. And then I do have some flow issues with the front of the nib. I kind of have to get it going. Um, but you can actually get a pretty nice thin line on the back, but it does catch on the paper. So this is one that's a little bit quirky. I've, I've been trying to play with it more. So like I said, you I really have to get the ink flowing a little bit. And I do wonder, here we go. I do wonder if, um, once you get it flowing, it's fine. Um, I do wonder if because this ink is a little bit maybe stickier than some um, that it that it has a little bit of flow issues with the um, nib here sorry it's hard for me to write and speak at the same time but this is actually doing pretty good uh, you're gonna get a different effect on the watercolor paper and sometimes it will create these blank spots in the middle, but this is also a really nice expressive pen. Um, and it's, it's kind of fun to play with, but it's a little bit finicky. So just FYI, I am going to put that in there. Um, let's go on to the Twisby Go since that one is next here. So this is one where I have swapped out the regular Twisby nib for a Schmidt Extra Fine nib. Um, just because I had it laying around, I took it off another pen and it, it really is, gr this has a heavy ink flow on the uh, thing, so I got it on my hand. Um, it really has a nice flow here. And this particular ink is platinum, um, what is it called? It's called Platinum Pigmented Sepia, which is also permanent. It does not have the larger particles like the carbon ink does, but it is still a permanent ink. And you can get some line variation again with this Schmidt nib. I think this came off of a um, Bennu pen because I put a um, a calligraphy nib on that Bennu pen and I had the nib left over so I put it in here. This had a terrible nib before <laughs> um, so I did need to swap it out but the Twisby Go is pretty cheap and you can, um, so this one you can pull off the back and depress this. If I did it now ink would squirt all across the desk but you can fill it really easily and empty it really easily with that so it is kind of nice that way it does not stay wet as as um, as long as other Twisby nibs I found or, or other Twisby pens, um, but it's still pretty decent. So I'm gonna put that one away and then I only have two more here and then the last one is another weird one. Um, whenever you're mixing permanent inks with um, a variety of different nibs and pens, you're gonna get some finickiness just because they tend to be a little stickier the inks do, they tend to be a little stickier and a little heavier than normal inks. Um, but this one, this is an Opus 88 full size. Um, I think this is just the demo. It has the color. You'll see that it's tinged a little bit pink. That's because of the ink that is in here, which is, uh, I have it written down here. This is um, Lennon Toolbar Atmospheric Night Sky. 
So Linen Tool Bar has a whole line of atmos atmospheric inks, which are all permanent. Um, my favorite of those is the uh, Atmospheric Cloudy Day, which is in this bottle here. It is It wasn't labeled, so I had to put the name on the back. But this is my favorite permanent ink, is this Atmospheric Cloudy Day by Linen Tool Bar. Um, followed by the Deatramentus inks, I would say. This one is the Fog Gray that I had in a prior pen. Um, the only problem with this Linen Tool Bar ink is that it does leave a very pink stain. So I didn't know that before I put it in here and it's kind of, you know, it's always gonna be stained pink, I think. And this one I have put a Sailor 21 karat extra fine nib on here. I had gotten a really inexpensive, well, for a Sailor, I'd gotten a really inexpensive Sailor in um, a smaller body, but with a 21 karat nib. Um, and this extra fine is really beautiful for sketching, really lovely. The only thing to watch out for is sometimes it will pick up fibers from the page and they'll get stuck in the nib, so you kind of have to floss your tines. Um, but this is also a beautiful combination, really nice for permanent use, <laughs> for permanent ink use. It's just really, really lovely. I would say if I only could pick two of the pens that are in here, I probably would pick the two Opus 88 pens. Um, because they really don't have any problem with ink flow and they're always ready to go. Um, followed by the, um, followed by the Twisby Eco with the extra fine nib, just because that also is always ready to go and is not very finicky. And this has the same mechanism as that mini pen. Um, it has a little stopper in here when you screw it closed like this, the stopper moves up to stop the flow of ink and when you open it up, it lets the ink flow. You cannot post this pen, so you know maybe even the, the mini one would be the one I chose first, but this nib that I have on here is lovely. And you may, if you haven't seen my prior videos about nib swapping and, and sort of inventive <laughs> nib rearranging, um, this is made possible by a housing by a flexible nib factory. They make housings that will fit um, Yovo or Bach uh, accommodating pens. And then you can put your fancier nib and, and usually the, the nib unit, the whole nib unit, goes down into that housing and then you can screw it into a housing that um, is for Yovo or Bach. Obviously it won't work for all pens, but it will work for pens that have a screw-in housing for those. So I'll put a link to that website as well. Um, and you know, a lot of times you can find a really good deal on Sailor pens on Amazon. I think this was a Sailor Profit pen, which is really made for the Asian market. Um, but it had, it was, even though it was a, um, I think it was a 1911 size, the, the smaller size of 1911 and it had a 21 karat nib, which is nice. It, it tends to be a little softer. Um, but I, the pen itself was just too small. I tend to like a larger pen. So this was a better fit for me for this pen. Um, and I, I think as far as combinations go, this one's probably my favorite sketching pen. I don't always use blue ink in my sketching, but you know, I, I tend to try to stay neutral for the most part. Okay, now this one is gonna be a little finicky. I'm running out of ink in here. So this is a two-sided pen BBS pen. And then this side, I have actually put an extra fine Franklin Kristoff nib, just a steel nib, which, which works really well and is really nice. Um, and then, you know, cause you can put um, you can swap out the nibs on these and it makes it really convenient to just put whatever two sketch nibs you like on one pen. This one I, and this side is going, um, is going dry even more than the other side and I couldn't find the ink for this so, it, so I couldn't fill it. So um, they also have a ballpoint um, nib, I guess, nib to put in there. Um, this one has been a little bit more finicky and because my ink is going dry and the ink is a little sticky, and the ink in here is actually the um, Kakimori Permanent Ink. This is one of the earlier iterations of the Kakimori Permanent Ink. 
and I think it was the lichen color. Um, when I first put it in here, this ballpoint worked great, um, but now it's got, gotten kind of low on ink and it's a little sticky, so I'm not really getting anything. Um, and I think that, that that's always a risk with having a ballpoint used with fountain pen ink of any kind. It can get sticky and caught up. But you can also put a fountain pen nib of your choice on both sides. And then they actually come with some pretty nice nibs. I just had this extra Franklin Kristoff nib and made it work here. So these are all options for different sketch pens. You'll notice that really the main difference is just the style of the pen. Um, cause all of these are fine to extra fine for the most part. And, um, that's what I prefer. If you like writing with a much chunkier pen, um, you may prefer something different. So now I think other than the exception of just the pen that I just wrote with, all of this should be dry and all of this should be dry as well. Obviously this is kind of a scribbly mess, but I am going to show you, I have some water off to the side and I'm just gonna use a regular watercolor brush. And then I would paint over these and they're all permanent. So you're not gonna have any smudging except for you know the one that I just put down. Um, and sometimes the platinum carbon ink does take a little while to dry. And if you don't let it dry 100%, you are not, you're gonna get smudging. And that's another reason why I prefer the De Atramentis nowadays in black. Um, because you, it, it dries really fast and you don't generally get the smudging. All right. Well, that ended up being a little bit longer of a video than I had planned, but you can see, um, you, you are getting a little bit of bleed, but I think that that is still from that last one that I did with the blue ink and the blue do nib also lays down a lot of ink. So you have to wait for that to fully dry, but for the most part it's dry and you can see that I put the water over here and it did not smudge at all. So these are all really good options. Um, this one, the Birmingham may have fuzzed just a little bit, for, but for all intents and purposes, it is a permanent ink. And here we, we had even less smudging on the watercolor paper. And that's what I would typically use it on, not Tamoy River, but you could, you could use it on Tamoy River. Okay, so I'm just gonna stack those up and put those aside. So as I was saying, some of these are discontinued. Some of these have changed in their look over the years because um, I some of these are rather old for me. Um, but I will put a link to the extent I can to the products that are available out there. And um, I will put a link to some of the permanent ink brands as well. So basically my favorites are the Linen Toolbar Permanent Inks, the De Atramentis Permanent Inks. I do also like the Rohrer and Klingner um, named sketch inks, but sometimes, depending on the color, some of them can have a little bit of um, an issue, mostly with the texture of the ink, it being a little gunky. Um, and the carbon black is always a good standby, but just note that you are gonna have to clean out your pens more with that. Um, really with any permanent ink, you should clean out your pens more, but I have not found that to be as much the case with other inks other than the Platinum Carbon Black. And I think it's really just because of the larger particles in this ink. Most of the other permanent inks have much smaller particles. All right, well, that's all I had for you today. I hope that satisfied the people who were requesting this video for both um, some different brands of permanent inks and also sketch pens. So if you have any questions, just feel free to ask below and I will answer when I can. Feel free to like this video if you enjoyed it and feel free to subscribe to keep track of future videos on my channel. I hope to see you next time, but in the meantime, have a great day. Thanks so much. Bye.